if do you do you want to hear my Sean Connery story? Yes. Uh, I was hired to uh, uh, be the live announcer for the AFI tribute to to Sean Connery, and the entire evening, every single person that got up there, of course, tried to do their best Sean Connery voice, and ninety nine percent of them really blew at it. Um, and uh, uh, afterwards, they had a party up at Spago. It was at the Kodak Theater, and then we, anyway. But the uh, so I go up there to to for, to the party, and all the VIPs are in their little area, and you know various folks around, and I'm I'm just one of the you know help. Uh, so I went up to the bar to get a, a beer, uh, or in my case back then a rum and diet coke. And uh, there's a guy next to me waiting in line, and the the bartenderess was probably a 23 year old, you know, model that was doing this to survive. And, um, she, just as she's like turning to get our order up walks, this nice balding mustachio gentleman and it, it's Sean. <laughs> and, uh, um, apparently, you know, again, he's apparently not really full of himself because he just kind of got tired of sitting with the VIPs and was wandering around and wanted something to drink. Well, you know, that's what I was thinking. They would have them, you know, quarantine somewhere oh, yeah. with like a thousand, uh, you know, bodyguards and whatever, well, especially being the well, man they, of the evening. Well, they didn't have to do many bodyguards because this was a private, private thing, but the, uh, uh, but no public was allowed, but they did exactly. They had like the hoi polloi up in the rope off area and it was Spielberg and George Lucas and, you know, George, I knew Spielberg had only met once, but, um, so, you know, but I wasn't part of that elite crowd where they brought drinks to me. So I was at the bar, there was a guy over there and then in up walks Sean Connery. And, uh, the, the woman behind the bar goes, okay, you're up. What do you want? And I went, Oh, oh no, p- please. Get get him. <laughs> After and you, she, I insist. She goes, she just got like frustrated and she turned to the other guy that was standing there and she goes, okay, what do you want? And he, he goes, oh, well, I'll, uh, she goes, what do you want? And he goes, I'll have a, a Bud Light, you know, whatever. And so she like oh, starts doing that. And then she again turns to me and goes, so what do you want? Uh, I said, uh, 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 no, it's really him. It's his. Uh, and she cuts me off and she goes, what, what do you want? You're next. And I went, ah. Uh, and he's just waving. He's like, don't, you know, don't worry about it. And I realized she has no idea who he is because she, she wasn't at the show. She works for Spago up there or whatever Wolfgang's place is at the Kodak or now what's it called now? The Dolby, the Dolby theater. Uh, Cause Kodak's bankrupt. But anyway, um, I realized she has no idea who this guy is. She doesn't know this party's for him. And he just kind of waves me off and I'm just like going, okay, I'll have a rum and coke. And then she turns to him and he goes, I understand you've got like a 1952 Lafrig something. It's, you know, probably some thousand dollar bottle of scotch. And she goes, oh, yeah, it's up here. If it's, you know, only for, uh, you know, whoever asked for it. He goes, well, that would be me. And she's like, OK, and pours it over a little ice. She hands it to him. And the guy with the Budweiser goes, aren't you going to get a vodka martini? And he gets about that far. And oh, God. Goes, he goes, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> and I go, what? He goes, if I had a hundred dollars for every time someone said that to me, I'd be richer than I am. <laughs> and the guy kind of like slunk away and I just kind of laughed. And I said, I said, yeah, it was pretty bad. Everybody in the whole night was trying to do your voice. And he goes, oh, yeah. you have no idea. I'll be taking a leak in a bathroom and some guy will recognize me in, in Botswana. And he'll be like, you want a martini shake? You're not stirred. And, uh, and he's like, well, as soon as I shake it off, I'll answer you. But um, he, uh, I said, well, you know, the funny part is I actually, he goes, what, what were you doing in this soiree? And I said, I was the announcer. He goes, oh, the fellow coming over the, I said, yeah. He goes, the voice of God. I said, well, kind of. I said, that would, that would have been James Earl Jones actually tonight. But um, he, uh, he goes, uh, I said, well, I've been paid to do some of your stuff. And he goes, for what? And I said, well, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And he goes, oh, that piece of shite, you know. And I went, eh. And, uh, and he goes, well, what did you do? And I said, well, I replaced a couple of lines. And he goes, well, let's hear them. I go, what? Oh, no goes, pressure there. No no goes, pressure at all. No, exactly. He goes, all night long, everybody's been trying to do my voice. And you've actually been paid, so let's hear it. And I went, oh, God, no. I said, I need headphones. <laughs> and, and, I, eh. and he goes, come on. And I went, so I leaned over and literally was like practically kissing his ears because it was so loud. I was like going, you know, right up there going, going, you know, the league 
set. The game is on. You know, I'm waiting to be impressed. So, and um, which were a couple of the lines I did. Listen, that's only a little tiny bit creepy. Just a little. But, <laughs> yeah, very creepy. But, that, but get this. So I, I do this for the man himself. And he turns and he looks at me and he goes, it's not bad. I've heard better. 